This is section 4.3, Mean Value Theorem. In this video, we're going to go through example 45 in your book. It gives us this function, and it's asking us for the critical points, um, intervals of increasing and decreasing, and the min and maxes of this function. Okay, but what makes this problem especially tricky, or what makes it especially tricky, is that it has trig functions in it. Um, but really, the process that we solve this problem is the same as for any other function. So let's go ahead and go through it. So first step to find our critical points. Remember, critical points are wherever the derivative equals zero. So I'm going to take the derivative of this function. Theta is my variable, so the, the derivative of that is just 1. And this becomes cosine theta minus sine theta. And now for my critical points, I just set this equal to zero. And this is where the problem becomes difficult, because we don't really solve this the way we would a normal equation. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my trig functions over to one side, and that'll give me sine theta minus cosine theta is equal to 1. And from here, you just kind of need to think of your uh, unit circle values. So remember, we're looking wherever sine theta minus cosine theta equals 1. Well, if you remember, at every 90 degree value, at 0, pi over 2, pi, so on, um, my coordinate values for sine and cosine are either 0 or 1. So I'm just going to think through each of those angles and see which one works for this equation. So for example, let's say that we had theta equals 0. At 0, sine is equal to 0, minus cosine is 1, 0 minus 1, negative 1, that doesn't work. Okay, let's move to the next one though. At pi over 2, sine is 1, cosine is 0, 1 minus 0 gives me 1, that works. Now we try pi, uh, I have 0 for sine, minus a negative 1 for cosine, gives me 1, that works. And my last uh, angle is 3 pi over 2, and that leaves me with sine is negative 1 minus 0, negative 1, that doesn't work. Okay, so going through all those angles, I know that pi over 2 and pi are my critical points. Okay, so next step to see where this function is increasing and decreasing, I'm going to make my number line, put in my critical points, and test values in each of these intervals and see what my derivative is doing, whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so in this first interval here, from 0 to pi over 2, let's try an easy number. Let's try theta equals 0. When I plug 0 in for my derivative, I get 1 plus cosine of 0 is 1, minus sine of 0 is 0, 1 plus 1. This gives me a positive value. So my f prime of theta is positive. In this middle interval, uh, between pi over 2 and pi, Let's try um, 3 pi over 4. That's a good one. And if you remember, the coordinates at 3 pi over 4 are negative rad 2 over 2 and positive rad 2 over 2. Okay, so when I plug that into my derivative, I get 1 minus rad 2 over 2 uh, plus, or sorry, minus rad 2 over 2 because it's minus a positive. Combining these, I get 1 minus 2 rad 2 over 2. 2's cancel, 1 minus rad 2. I may not know what rad 2 is, but I do know that it's bigger than 1. So 1 minus rad 2 is going to give me a negative value. And in this last interval, let's try uh, the value 3 pi over 2. Remember at 3 pi over 2, I have the coordinates 0, negative 1. So when I plug that in, I have 1 plus 0 minus a negative 1. That will be 1 plus 1. This will be a positive value again. So in this interval, uh, my derivative is positive. Okay, so I have all those signs. Now I'm going to say what f of theta is doing, what my original function is doing on these intervals. When the derivative is positive, that means that my original function is increasing. So when it's negative, it's decreasing. And over here it's positive again, so my original function is increasing. Okay, and now just looking at my signs here, I can tell which of these critical points is the min and which is the max. So here, since I'm going from increasing to decreasing, I know that this critical point, pi over 2, has to be a max. And likewise over here, since I'm going from decreasing to increasing, this critical point, pi, has to be a min. And that's really it for this problem. So let's write all of our answers in one very tiny location. So I know my critical points are pi over 2 and pi. I know my interval of increasing is from 0 to pi over 2 and from pi to 2 pi. 
I know my interval of decreasing is this part in the middle from pi over 2 to pi. And I know that my max happens at theta equals pi over 2, and my min happens at theta equals pi. And that's it for this problem. Yep, we solve it like any other function, just the hard part was actually figuring out what our critical points were by just thinking about the unit circle and thinking of those values. But other than that, same process. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sidrich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.